every day. There are a lot of children who wake up and decide how the world is going to run. You know? And it um, doesn't mean they're mean. It means they've got a plan and get out of my way. It means that they will direct and uh, boss around and try to get things to go their way. It doesn't mean they're trying to hurt people. It doesn't mean any of these, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't relate to any of these three indicators of bullying. But many people misunderstand this developmentally appropriate um, idea of making the world work the way you want it to work. In your naivety, in the preschool years, you know what you want, and some people, by their innate predisposition, go for it. The bossy child is a different animal. Um, the bossy child actually has a profile. The bossy child does better with health. Can you imagine that being a dominant or a bossy child results in better health outcomes? That you deal with stress better and your physical health is better over time? This is the work of Dr. Tom Boyce. And it's sort of groundbreaking work. Um, they can identify the pecking order in toddler daycare programs. Now, any of you who work with toddlers will not be surprised. I used to be fascinated that in junior kindergarten, the kids could tell you exactly who's the fastest runner, who knows how to tie their shoe, who can, who can fix the zippers on snowsuits that get jammed? Who's the quickest eater, can you imagine? Like who knew that was a game? So they also know who can read or recognize the names of other children in the class. They know everything and they have it all ranked. Some things are more important than other things. Being a fast runner is very important, just in case you didn't know. Not as important. <coughs> as, um, I mean, it's less important to the children that there's some child who recognizes other children's names that doesn't have as much currency. But it's really interesting that the less dominant preschoolers, they have um, the lower end of the pecking order, they have more health problems. And I mean, this is, I find this quite alarming actually, that they can look at social order and see impacts from it. And it really parallels quite in an interesting way to the Whitehall study, which was a study they, that took place in uh, the government um, in, based in London, looking at all the different job classifications. So you would think that the biggest stress level would be in the top jobs, where you had the most responsibility, where you, had, uh, you were in the public eye, like if you messed up, everybody had your name because you were at the head of a department or something like that. So you would think that would be the most stressful. The most stressed people were in the jobs where they had the least control. And you would think, okay, that person can go home, they don't have to worry that the sky is going to fall overnight. That person had higher stress levels, earlier heart attacks and shorter lifespan than the people in the most stressful job. They got more cancers, they got more of the bad stuff and less of the good stuff and less money. So it's all about a sense of control we have in our own sphere. So that's why it's so important that every child feels a sense of their own self-efficacy and they have a sense of voice, that we make sure that we hear every child. And, you know, this idea of um, higher heart rates and greater outputs of stress. They but one of the research studies on the children who have roots of empathy in their classes um, is looking at resting heart rate. And the thesis is that the children in the Roots of Empathy class, and we don't know, we'll have to see what the study says, but the thinking is that the children who have Roots of Empathy will have lower resting heart rates, <laughs> less stress, lower cortisol levels, and higher oxytocin levels. Oxytocin is the hormone that is like the relax, affectionate, life is cool hormone, the opposite to cortisol. And the reason is that the children are having many, many opportunities over the school year to reflect on things, to think about how they feel and to increase their level of emotional literacy so that 
they do understand how they're feeling. And if you understand how you're feeling, and you have the vocabulary for it, you can tell somebody. And you know, to be locked into feeling terrible and not have the ability to share that with anyone is destructive. But if you are feeling very upset, whether you're fearful, anxious, whatever the negative emotion is, and you have the capacity to go to your teacher or to go home and say to someone in your family, I feel a bit worried today. Boy, everybody stops dead in their tracks. They want to listen to the child. It's disarming, but it's empowering to the child. And the whole point of what happens in the preschool years is that we always work through the lens of the social and emotional developmental expectations <coughs> for the child. And what you folks have over families and where you can help families is that you do know the appropriate expectations for the age. But you have another lens that helps you understand children uniquely through their temperament.